He is a consummate teammate who constantly inspires all. Going to Nagby, ties it up. A young gun with a license to thrill. Drafted number two overall by the Portland Timbers, Darlington Nagby's first score was the MLS goal of the year. For the next 36 hours, watch this sophomore sensation juggle soccer balls, wedding plans, and a new life in Portland. Darlington Nagby, an emerging soccer star, next on MLS 36. <laughs> 8 a.m. A beautiful day just outside Portland, Oregon. Heading out for their morning walk are Portland Timbers young midfielder Darlington Nagby and his fiancée Felicia. After a childhood on the move, it's here in the great northwest where Nagby has found a home. Kiki. Kiki. I was born in Liberia. And from there I moved to, I was in Sierra Leone for a little bit. France for like six years. Switzerland for a year, then Switzerland to Greece for four years. When I was 12, moved to Ohio, and then now I'm here. New home in Portland with my fiance. <laughs> Come on, Jay. I like it in Portland so far, you know? I like the city, it's not too big, it's easy to get around. I feel like it fits my personality more, just, just low key. I like it nice and quiet. Waking up and walking and seeing the beautiful mountains and the scenery is just a lot different than what I grew up from. Jay. Surprised my mom isn't calling. Actually calls me every day. If I don't answer, she'll leave a voicemail. I think my voicemail's full right now. It's because of her, probably. She still cries when I score. <laughs> Unfortunately, scoring goals hasn't come easy for Nagby this season. After an impressive rookie year, Nagby struggled. While he's regained his scoring touch of late with two goals in his last two games, more is needed from him and the team. So far, we're not doing as well as we'd like to do. Over the next 36 hours, we just have uh, our game against Vancouver. It's a big game for us, and uh, we're going to try and get a win. The 2012 season continues to be a struggle for the Timbers. The young squad hasn't earned a victory in its last eight games and finds itself at the bottom of the Western Conference. While their effort has been better in recent games, their chances of making the playoffs are slim. So far, it hasn't gone as well as we wanted to go, you know, but everyone's still confident. Guys still coming to training and working hard every single game. This is my idol right here. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's my idol. <laughs> We're a cohesive group. We're not splintering away from each other. And, and we've stuck together through this tough year. And now it's a matter of us turning these strong performances not into one point, but into three. Darlington epitomizes what we want this group to be. A, a group of individuals that are committed to the game and have talent. Now we're just lacking that last little bit, which is getting success on the field. 9.40 a.m., the Timbers gather for their pre-practice video session. Their matchup with the Whitecaps marks an important game in the Northwest region's Cascadia Cup, an annual competition between Portland, Vancouver, and Seattle. All right, guys, huge game tomorrow. Obviously, Cascadia Cup, if you look at our season, the way it's gone, this means a, a hell of a lot to our fan base. And at the moment, I, I would say we owe them something. Is that fair? Jack in the middle of the park, wanting you to organize Nagby and Alexander. Eric, this one in here, if Frank doesn't track, you are responsible for going with YP Lee, and then Nagby and Jack, you have to balance out. Make sense? All right, gentlemen, have a good session, all right? 10.15 a.m. The Timbers take the field for practice. Now in his sophomore season, 22-year-old Nagby is out to prove why Portland made him the second overall pick in the 2011 MLS draft. Going to Nagby, ties it up! Going to Nagby. Darlington, you know, he's got a long career ahead of him. He's doing well for himself right now, but there's a whole other level that he could achieve. He wants the yeah. Let's go! He can do things with the ball that most players find either difficult or, or next to impossible. He just has that natural talent. He has so many gifts that you just can't coach. He's so quick and so fast, he glides by people and makes it look so easy. He could be extremely, extremely special. But with Darlington, 
you know, you, you, you look at all his strengths and now you just want him to know how good he is. They always ask him to show a little bit more self-belief and that killer instinct and in what he, he can do and actually having the arrogance of knowing how good he is. And, and for him, that's the arrogant side of it is not something that comes naturally. They've been telling me for a while now when I get on the field just to switch it on and uh, be a selfish guy, but I'm uh, still trying to learn it, still trying to be more selfish. Uh, hopefully it gets, uh, I get more selfish down the road. <laughs> Obviously he's been brought up very, very well and he's liked by everybody in the locker room, which is rare in professional sports, but you know, I think his parents did a great job, his mum did a tremendous job, and maybe if she didn't do such a great job, he'd be even better. If he was a he would be a better player. That's the honest truth of it. MLS 36 on NBC Sports Network is brought to you by Sleep In. Dream better here. Book now at sleepin.com. Century 21, the official real estate company of the U.S. soccer national teams. The Volkswagen Jetta, that's the power of German engineering. And Allstate, are you in good hands? p.m. With Timbers practice over, Darlington Nagby takes on his second job, Team Barber. Frank's my, Frank's my best customer, though. <laughs> I started in high school. My brother, uh, he learned from his friend that's a barber, and uh, so he just started cutting the hair, and then my brother started cutting my hair, and then I just decided just to try my hair one day, and uh, at first it didn't turn out too well, but I just kept trying and trying, and then uh, I got pretty decent at it, and you know, I did some of the guys here in the locker room. Frankie keeps joking that I should open the barber shop when I'm done playing. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. <laughs> 1.30 p.m., the Adidas headquarters in Portland. Nagby and his teammate Freddie Braun arrived to run a charity soccer clinic for children enrolled in the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. My name is Darlington, and I'm just gonna coach you guys today. You can call me Darlington or, or D, whatever, whichever works for you, whichever is simpler. Good pass. It's important for me as a player to be part of the community because you want to give back, you know? Yeah, fine. All it's right. not just about the team and the players and winning games, but it's also making sure that the fans are satisfied and the community is satisfied because they're the ones coming to the game supporting us and making it such a fun place to live and a fun place to play. One, two, three, Adidas! Good pass. Go, 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 Messi, go! Go, Messi, go! Darlington, how you feel right now? You sweating? Nah, I'm cool, it's windy. Uh, <laughs> I'd be scared right now. No, nah, I'm not scared. We got the ball now. Go, go, go! Go, Trent, go, Trent! It's just fun being with the kids and seeing them have fun, you know? It just reminds me of myself when I was that age. Born in Liberia at a time of civil unrest, it was his mother, Soma, who overcame severe hardships to raise her family. When the war broke out, she was pregnant with me and the, my older brother was two at the time. And uh, it was just tough when uh, she's walking in the streets and then there's people shooting at, after everyone. So she just said she had a tough time and she got, everyone got split up and she actually del delivered me in the house by the, the rebel soldiers help her deliver me in the house. Uh, it was just her in the dark in the middle of the night. Every time I look at my mom, I just, realize everything she's been through and how much she's done for for all four of us, me and my older brother and two younger sisters. And I feel like just playing soccer and uh, hopefully being more successful uh, make my mom proud of me. Good job, guys. And what's not to be proud of? Good job. A rising star job, in soccer That's who has his feet planted firmly on the ground. <laughs> I just like a regular guy, you know? Yeah, fun? Yeah. Just signing autographs, it's, it's fun, but at the same time, I just like a normal guy. I feel like, I feel like the guy that's, I don't know, the same guy that mows our lawn for practice. It's the same guy as me. Awesome. No problem, thanks for coming. <laughs> 6 p.m. in downtown Portland, a perfect evening for a double date. Darlington and Felicia step out for dinner with Freddie and his girlfriend, Erin. 
it's fun be able to go to dinner and just hang out with our friends and have a good time. We have a big fat juicy cheeseburger with extra cheese. You might as well get the cheese fries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Freddie get along pretty well. He's gonna be one of the groomsmen in my wedding, and Aaron's gonna be one of Felicia's bridesmaids. So it's just fun to hang out, talk about the wedding, talk about future plans and things like that. I'm gonna wear like a darker tie. And then you guys are like gonna wear like a lighter tie. I think that's a good idea. You gotta I stick mean. out. <laughs> yeah. And all the four of us when we're together, uh, just hang out, have fun, make jokes. It's a good time. I think you'd like this. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> four friends eating, laughing, and enjoying the Portland lifestyle. A nice way to relax with just over 24 hours until game time. Eight twenty a.m. on Saturday. The civilians of Portland are just starting their day. But down at Jeldwen Field, the Timbers Army has already reported for duty. Yeah, my friend Bobby up there. He, he was here. Like I got my last text from him. It was like uh, he said he was here at two a.m. We're all part of the Timbers Army, so I mean it's the way it is in Portland. So you all get to come stand in line and hang out with our friends on Saturday mornings. Fans who, as you can see, are here 14 hours before a match. Meanwhile, just outside the city, Darlington Nagby and his fiancee Felicia begin their game day routine. My Craig egg is so good. Can I go one-handed? I think my mom told me. I just woke up and Felicia's making me some breakfast, some French toast, and it looks delicious so far. I taught her all her cooking skills, so. You actually did teach me how to make French toast. Yeah, I actually did. <laughs> well, when I got drafted, I got a, the engagement ring that I gave Felicia. He told me we had a team um, picnic that day. Freddie and I went up to this place called Council Crest, and we just put a bunch of flowers like around the area just to make it look nice. We were just walking along uh, up the hill, and uh, she saw like the decorations and everything, all the flowers we put up, and she was like, <laughs> I thought it was a memorial, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a memorial because it was a bunch, it was like a bunch of stones. We put a bunch of flowers around it, so she thought it was a memorial. Yeah, it was so funny. So we were just standing there just talking. And I just told her thanks for moving to Portland with me and how much I loved her, and then I got that on one knee. I was scared at first, the ring wouldn't go on. <laughs> Getting married December 15th, back in Ohio where we're from, and it's gonna be fun, hopefully. You should go open our box. Your gift? Our gift. Oh, yeah, our gift. Our gift. Yeah, we're getting a bunch of, like, bridal shower gifts now in the mail. Yeah. Oh, they gave us... Oh, that's not what I thought it was. That's all that's in there? We got a cupcake holder. Our first gift together, cupcakes. Yep. <laughs> it was exciting. I was excited. <laughs> 5 p.m. Timber's army is poised, ready to invade Jeldwen Field. Inside, the famous victory log lays in wait, a slab to be cut every time a home team player scores a goal. 5.15 p.m., Felicia drives Darlington to the stadium. Sell out crowd. Bye. I love you. I love you too, man. Good luck. Thanks. Score for me. It still shocks me, you know, every time just driving up to the stadium. I'm just like, wow. Six fifty PM. The hometown team takes the field for warm-ups and embraces the full force of Timber's army. It's just special, you know, just hearing them chanting. These are the best fans in the country, and they're there no matter what, whether we're winning or losing. They're there supporting us. I, I think the energy of our fans will, will obviously help our players and bring a different level, level of energy onto the field. But we'll match their passion and then hammer them, all right? Means a lot more to us right here. It's real important, not just because it's a rivalry game with Vancouver and us in Seattle. 
Cascadia Cup, but uh, just for ourselves, you know, just to get uh, go in the right direction again and start winning games. Everything positive. Everybody's in it together. We, we've not done well as of late. Some of the performances have been good, but the, the results have, have been poor. And this is a chance to put that right. Make a difference. Have an impact. Eric, look to shoot. D, look to shoot. Jack, Bright, Frank, Sal. Who's going to score? Everything, right? Let's go, let's go. 7.25 p.m. Nagby and the Timbers retake the field, knowing they can't walk off without a win. Just after 7.30 p.m., game time. The Portland Timbers versus the Vancouver Whitecaps. Darlington Nagby and his teammates are hungry for a win. And Timber Joey is hoping for a chance to cut the victory log. He does now get underway. In touch. Wait, wait, wait. Paced by their young midfielder, the Timbers come out the aggressors, looking to set the tone and grab the early lead. There's certain times in the game when you're surrounded by guys and you get the ball and you get out of the pressure and that's when you really feel the adrenaline going in when you're running with the ball and you just feel faster for some reason. And we try to get away Thornton behind him. Nagby gets on half off and it's just high. Going to Nagby. The gap opened up and he didn't need a second invitation. Shoot that, shoot that. It's cross. DK off the post. Good warning shot, though, across the bow of the Vancouver Whitecaps. They've been clearing a lot of balls, like, back towards the kicker. So just stay a little further. All right. Ball. Let's try. Let's try and, like, do something, all right? Yeah. Try and keep the ball more. Us older guys try to tell them, hey, at any point you can take over a match. Don't pass the ball. Go out, guys. Out to win. Nagby. In the 41st minute, Nagby takes over. Nagby's goal ignites the Timber faithful. It's his sixth goal of the season and his third in the last three games. Robson able to hold off Nagby. But in the final minutes of the half, the Timbers fail to hold the lead. And there was O'Brien to Merritt, scuffs at it, falls for Miller, and Vancouver right at the end of the first half has tied the game. Every time. Every time. All that good momentum the Timbers had after the Nagby goal swept away in one moment. Everyone listen in. We've dominated the first half. If you go out there and prove a point, dictate the momentum, dictate the rhythm, and take it to them. And you must find a way to win. Control the Cascadia Cup. A lot of positive feelings at stake for both of these teams. 9 p.m. 45 minutes remain in the game. 45 minutes to deliver a victory or to fall short once again. Hey, 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 hey. Nagby and the Timbers play like a desperate team. Nagby on the ball now. Needs some help. And in the middle of the flick, knocked down by Ricketts, saved by Ricketts. I think for us, the hardest part has been turning these positive performances in the last month or two uh, into three points because we, we feel like we've dominated games, we've created more chances, and for whatever reason, we just uh, we can't get out of there with a win. Fight, fight, fight. It's a free kick for the Timbers. Scare and Horse both come forward. Aaron Horst getting it one other song of off from it. It's a throw! And the Timbers have retaken the lead! Frank Songo's goal gives the Timbers the lead, but not yet the victory. Sal, keep it! Keep it! Falls for Seesaw now. Richards again. Big from Donovan Ricketts. Still a threat. Camilo off the line from Stephen Smith. I've got to tell you, that stops as, as good as any goal at the other end of the pitch. 
With just a few minutes remaining, Nagby is subbed out for defensive purposes. Mission accomplished. Well done, buddy. We should get the cameras here every week. What a great, great game. Well great game, Thank you. Well done. Well done. And that's it. Back in the driver's seat of the Cascadia Cup, it is exactly what this entire group, this entire organization desperately needed after a hard two months, a hard fought two to one victory over the Vancouver Whitecaps. After eight games without a win, the Timbers and their fans finally have something to celebrate. Best part about it. Those guys. And Darlington Nagby has something to show for that selfishness everyone has been looking for. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while since we won a game, but it just feels good, you know? You just come to the locker room after the game and everyone's happy. Uh, everyone's having fun, music's blasting, it feels good. The team wants to have a quick word, gentlemen. Everyone give them a round of applause. Uh, good work, guys. Uh, great win. Everyone worked hard. A <laughs> hey, tremendous win, huge. Everyone played well, fought to the end. Great, huge win. Well done, gentlemen. Hey, mommy. I know, me too. <laughs> All right, love you too, mommy. Bye. Uh, she's, she's just happy. She's just happy. She's proud of me. She's just proud of me. She's been through so much. She's just, she's just proud of me. I miss her. Best mother. Not all 36 hours are created equal. Some contain wondrous gifts that lifetimes are made of. A slice of wood, a first ever wedding present, a win, and a simple conversation of unexpected tenderness that a son and future husband will always remember.